the final Kentucky Derby presented by Woodford Reserve Prep Race of the 2022 season is upon us. It's the Stone Street Lexington Stakes at Keeneland Racecourse. Ed DeRosa, Sarah Albadwi. Two questions about this race, Sarah. One, who's going to win, of course. But two, do you see anyone in here making an impact three weeks later in the Kentucky Derby? Well, I think the latter question is the easier one to answer. <laughs> and um, for me, the answer is no. Not that it's not impossible with this race in the past to sort of make a splash in the Derby just a few short weeks later. But I think that this is kind of the last chance to get in the starting gate for some. And then it's also just, you know, a regular race for the three-year-olds. It could be a prep for the Preakness or some of those other graded stakes later on for them to see where they stack up as far as three-year-old Colts are concerned. And then as far as who's going to win, I think you and I both kind of uh, – <laughs> chalked out in this race a little bit with in due time i think he's just the most battle tested of these um he certainly you know whatever you think of the ride last time out in the fountain of youth he did end up running a strong race right and, you know not his fault where he was placed in there and uh, look he he stands to get into the kentucky derby field if the connections so choose but he just seems like the class of this race yeah when i looked at the race uh and I like my figures, so I got to those in a moment. But uh, really, for pace, I like to get a sense of what horses actually are on the lead or near it. And that struck me for this one that on the left side of the running line column, not a lot of ones and twos. Uh, so I really sort of leaned on the pace and numbers and things of that nature. And it seemed like with Paco up, the inside draw, all signs pointed to why wouldn't you be a little aggressive, especially at the short stretch, short run into the first turn, tactical speed going to be very advantageous. That in the end, even as the chalk is why I went within due time. I think Tawny Port maybe has the chance to be the better horse going forward. And he's here uh, to protect his position in the Kentucky Derby starting gate needs a fourth place finish or better given the outside post. That was kind of the final straw to say, okay, maybe they don't need to win this. Maybe the outside post, he doesn't win anyway. Uh, Tawny Port, I actually am interested in the Kentucky Derby, but from this standpoint in the Lexington, I did go within due time. I think that we're going to have to see what kind of race course we get on um, Saturday going into because we saw a very different track bias than we had seen last week for opening weekend at Keeneland. Yesterday, very strong inside speed type of bias. A lot of rain last night, so I wonder what is going to be possibly changing as far as the way that the track is playing or if those changes are going to be taking place going into Saturday. But in due time would certainly be helped by the kind of horse that we saw yesterday and yes. all those other outside posts really hurt by it, especially Call Me Midnight on the right. far outside, post 11. Um, the other one that has kind of faced the type of stakes caliber company and sort of the top three-year-olds even beating Epicenter, who's... Not one of, if not the likely favorite for the Kentucky Derby so far. Certainly his chances aren't really helped with the, the outside draw and his running style in here. And speaking of the Louisiana circuit, Strava struck out, or maybe strikes out in the race, <laughs> but stuck out to me uh, being uh, having gone through that Louisiana circuit, which both on the Oaks and Mayo side of things seems to have uh, produced some solid performances throughout the Derby trail, maybe needs to improve just a, a bit too much, but depending on the price, uh, certainly one maybe underneath, especially maybe fading some of the shorter prices on the outside. Right. And another one that is going to be a shorter price in here does stand to improve, but not really one that I'm necessarily looking at. That's number seven, Major General, going out for Todd Fletcher and Irad Ortiz Jr., only making his fourth lifetime start, has faced some of the better three-year-olds that we thought of, such as, you know, Classic Causeway, now off the Derby Trail after kind of a disappointing performance last time. Something may have been a miss there. But he stumbled in that start. Maybe this is his, you know, real first off the layoff three-year-old campaign opener type of race. And we see him in the summer later on uh, running with the horses that have been on the Triple right. Crown Trail. Well, the leaderboard will be set after the Lexington on Saturday. I'm going to do a fair odds line on Monday. Assuming none of these horses wow us to the point of thinking they're the most likely derby winner. At this point, not asking for a pick, just in your mind, most likely winner of the Kentucky Derby based on what we've seen. 
most likely winner going in so far, not necessarily who I'm going to be picking or betting. Right. To me, is at the center. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, Taiba, Taiba, Taiba. I've I've heard all three. I really should. <laughs> What's learn. the third? Taiba, Taiba, Taiba. Oh, okay. Like a yeah. little like Tai. Right. Okay. Which, well. <laughs> we should get to know for sure how to say that because right. it's going to be prominent among the top choices. Uh, I just, the, the, thir the third career star and the two-year-old thing, I know Justify broke that, but I I just can't at a short price, which I didn't ask about picks, but he, I just can't imagine the public will go in that direction either. And I just don't see him as, a, as the most likely winner. I, I agree with you completely. I think that he will take money. Though. Yeah. I think that he will probably be that type of wise guy horse that we're going in and oh, he's very lightly raced and Mike Smith certainly thinks a lot of him and, you know, possibly could be that one to kind of sneak in there, Sure, and, you know, but I, I think he's going to be taking money and pretty live on the board. So yeah. well, it's going to be a fun three weeks. Yeah. I'm excited. The buzz is uh, around us all here in Louisville. We have a lot of really exciting things coming up. We're doing the Courier journal. I saw this yeah. morning um, talking with better betting. Better betting is I that think, what it's called? Yeah, maybe that's the other one, but you can call it that. With mm -hmm. David Lovich, the Paddock yeah. Prince. Yeah. So that'll be fun. We have plenty our, of Derby Week content, right? And uh, plenty of Keelan stuff going on. You have your picks on the website. I do. We're, we're doing Got a some, little contest. Yeah, a little fun side bet <laughs> over here. Beat me yesterday. Good on you. Yeah. That was without knowing about that strong inside speed bias. So you picked that horse anyway. So good job. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't pick. It would have been nice to have a few of the others, but we'll <laughs> take it. Wins are wins. And that's right. Wins are wins. <laughs> and we will win together, hopefully, in the Lexington Stakes yes. in due time for both me and Sarah. And we'll be back next week. Not sure if it'll be a race preview, but definitely want to continue the Derby dialogue. So uh, like and subscribe. A lot of good videos Sarah's putting together. Doug Salvatore is looking at race replays, Horse Center. It's a great channel. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Super screener. One last thing. Got to yes. get that in there. Get your copy of the Kentucky Derby Super Screener for 2022. Mike Shetty is putting that together. You'll also get a preview of the Lexington if you buy now. Oh, do it. <laughs> Fixed on horseracingnation.com.